Are you too big for a Trail 125? And why am I wearing these ridiculous sunglasses? The answer to both those questions coming up now. Hey folks, today we're going to talk about everybody's favorite subject, a Honda Trail 125. Now before we get started, I need to address something very important. These sunglasses. See, I started to film this already, and my glasses, my eyes, uh, a little bloodshot. So we're going to wear these. Why these sunglasses in particular? Because they're the only ones I have in my office that aren't transition lenses. The sketchers of the face. So now that we have that addressed, uh, I think I look pretty good in a many way. We're going to move on to the topic at hand. So the number one question on all my videos at this point and on the internet in general, is the Trail 125 too small for me or am I too big for the Trail 125? The answer to that is maybe. See, the truth of the matter is there's too many factors to come at play. And we're going to talk about each one of those factors and so you can decide for yourself if the Trail 125 is too small for you. I made a few notes. We're going to go over them. I'm 6'2". I have a 35 inch inseam and my arms are 37 inches long if you pay attention to the sleeves of my dress shirts. I do fit on it. Um, I just end up sitting on the bar behind the seat. Some people will put a pool noodle there, wrap it in a pool noodle. Some people will buy an extended seat, but that limits your rack space. Uh, what I've done is I bought some rocks risers, which are two inch bar risers and move the seat or move the handlebars forward. If I put them forward all the way, then I wouldn't be able to get the key in the ignition and that's not going to work. So I backed them off a little bit. It's primarily, uh, or it's, it's close to where I want it to be. Might not be ideal, but it's close and it works for me. Uh, the other thing, if you're tall, Maybe, and if you're short, I don't know any four foot people that can test this for me. If you're four feet, leave it in the comments. But the mirrors, the mirrors, unless you like looking at your shoulders, you're going to have to get new mirrors. There's just no way out of that. I have double take mirrors on mine. They work pretty well. I can see behind me. Combine the double take mirrors with moving the handlebars forward. I get ample view and I'm not worried about people behind me, which is incredibly important when you're dealing with a bike that slow. Speaking of slow, how fat are you? Your weight really dictates your experience on a Trail 125. So the bike weighs 256 pounds and it has a 265 pound payload. I weigh 220 pounds. Between myself, my gear, the farkles that I have on the bike, and the case of beer that I happen to mostly pick up from the store, between all those things, I'm at the limit, maybe beyond it. Now, if you've ever seen a Jeep going down the road, going towards some trails with 10,000 pounds of armor and rock sliders and roof racks and all this stuff, people don't tend to pay attention to what the actual payload of vehicles are. You can believe that it's just lawyers throwing out numbers to prevent liability for the company. If I still weighed over 300 pounds like I did when the bike first came out, I wouldn't have paid attention to it either. But as such, technically, if you plus your gear plus what you're carrying weighs more than 265 pounds, yes, the bike is too small for you. You're gonna to have to get something else unless you just don't pay attention to the lawyers. What about altitude? So the bike has nine-ish horsepower, something like 8.7, between 8.7 and nine, depending on what website you look at. I don't have a dyno and I'm not paying to have a dyno. It's under 10. So let's say it has nine. I am at 4,700 feet of elevation for my at my house. You lose roughly 3% horsepower at, for every thousand feet of gain in altitude. So that means I'm sitting at, I don't know, 7.7 .7 horsepower in my driveway. Now, when I go up to my dad's house, that's at 6,200 feet, we're down to less than seven and a half. If I were to go camping in Big Bear, 7,000 feet or so, we're down to barely seven. So now we go from a nine horsepower bike to a seven horsepower bike. That makes a difference. Uh, if you're in Florida and you're at sea level, you're gonna have a different experience from those of us up in the mountains. If you're in Iowa and you live in a state or you live in a state where you can watch your dog run away for three days, you're not gonna have to worry about any sort of elevation changes and your experience is gonna be different. Here, 
uh, I can do 53 downhill, but 40 is about all I can maintain. 38 is about the comfort level. In third gear, full throttle, going up a hill with my 240 pounds of me and stuff. So, maybe. Uh, if you want to go fast, this isn't the bike for you. So let's talk about expectations. This isn't a dirt bike. This isn't an enduro. This isn't even a TW200. It's a slow bike. It's a small bike. If you can't get someone that you know that's a good friend or make a good friend that has one of these to do a test ride, just imagine a BMX bicycle that can go 40 plus miles an hour. If you can't imagine that or imagine that that's fun, then you don't want one. There's only three kinds of people that I can see that buy these Trail 125s. Number one, you see people online, social media, YouTube, wherever. It's like, hey, that looks like a lot of fun. I'd like to have one of those. And you get the fear of missing out. FOMO's real, and I had it. The second kind of person that would buy a Trail 125 is the scalper. They used to be much more difficult to get than they are right now. I think they're they're much more abundant at dealerships than they used to be, but there's still ADM out there. As you know, I if you watch my previous videos, I paid ADM for mine back in May. Now, if you people that buy these that think they're going to scalp them for more than they paid, I think those days are gone. You're not going to have a whole lot of those, but those people were trying to take advantage of the people in the first bucket. Now, the third bucket is a group of people that when they see the bike, it speaks to them. It's not necessarily a tangible, uh, logical idea, but when I first saw it, I knew I wanted one. Of course, I weighed over 300 pounds at the time, and it, I couldn't get a hold of one. Now I'm 220. Uh, the bike is great. I'm glad I bought it. I was in the third bucket. Or I am in the third bucket. I was in the first bucket, and I'll never be in the second bucket. See, the thing is, the motorcycles... It's emotional. It's not about the most logical choice. There's better bikes out there. There's cheaper bikes out there. If you want to get something like a CSC TT250, it costs about half the price and has almost twice as much power. I thought about getting one, but I wanted a trail. If you just want price for performance, get a TT250. Uh, if you want a trail, then you're going to get a trail. There's really no logical reason to get a trail. If you just want a small mini moto, the Grom is the cheapest. Go buy that. And they're available. There's tons of aftermarket support. You don't even have to order your parts from Thailand like you do for a trail. And speaking of Thailand, from the people that I've talked to over in Thailand, there's better options over there for an underbone motorcycle. So it's really an emotional choice. You can't listen to anybody else on the internet. You have to decide if this bike is for you. The bike was for me. It's the most fun I have on any of my bikes. It's not my slowest. The Ural I think is slower. And the trail doesn't try to kill me every time I ride it like the Ural does. Where am I going with this? I don't even know. Are you gonna look ridiculous on it? Probably. Especially if you're my size or bigger. But I already wear a bright yellow air stitch, so it doesn't really matter. And I mean, all I'm missing is a unicorn tattoo or something. So don't listen to anybody on the internet. See if you can find one for a good deal. If you think it's too slow, it's going to be too slow. You're better off with a TT250 or a TW200 or a CRF 300L. I mean, you could spend as much or as little as you want. But there's only one trail, and if that's what you want, that's what you should get. Are you too big? That's you. That's on you to decide. I can't tell you if you're too big for it. Every bike I've ever had, I've had to make some sort of adjustment or modification. The Ural has rocks risers, the Goldwing has $800 heli bars, the, and the trail has some adjustments with the bars and stuff as well. So. It's definitely possible to have this bike work for you. But if you're expecting to hit the freeway, it's not legal. If you're just going to putz around town, it's great. 
If you don't mind going slow on the trails, you're not doing anything too extreme, you don't have a whole lot of ground clearance, you're not going to do any sweet jumps. If you're okay with that, and you're okay with having a bike that just looks awesome, but isn't very fast, trail might be for you. If you like this video or any of my videos, don't forget to subscribe. We are less than 100 subscribers away from me live streaming eating one of these stupid chips. It expired last year, but I'm still going to eat it. So get us to 500 so I can eat one of these chips. And at 1,000, I am going to try to ride 1,000 miles in 24 hours on that trail 125. So let's get there. Thanks for watching.